and one. Awesome. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another interview in the Future Proof Your Law Firm group. I am so excited to be having Melanie Bragg here tonight. Uh, she has a lot of awesome experience that she's looking to share, especially for young lawyers, maybe some people that are struggling. She's been in the game for a really long time um, and uh, really excited to have you here, Melanie. Thank you. Thank you so much, Luke. Yeah. So why don't we start with a little bit, uh, you know, if you could give an introduction of yourself, a little bit more of your background and what your firm is kind of focusing on right now. Okay, great. Now, thank you so much for having me. You know, uh, I, there was a day when I used to have to dummy myself up to qualify myself because I was so young that I didn't have the credibility. And now I'm kind of dumbing myself down. When you say, oh, she has so many years of experience, it's scary. But you know, it goes by so fast. And so, uh, but I have been on my own since I opened my doors. I left the Court of Appeals. I was a briefing attorney for one year. And then I started my own firm the following Monday. That was August 15th, 1983. And I've been on my own since then. And I've had a, my firm that does a lot of things. I always joke, I say, you got a problem and you got some money, I could probably solve it for you, <laughs> okay? And the thought of doing the same thing for 40 years is really boring to me. So I have had a lot of varied experience. And now the cool thing about your practice when it develops is that so many things, I might get a hybrid problem that has a little bit of something I did 20 years ago, a little bit of something I did 30 years ago, a little bit of something I've never done. There's a, still a lot of things. That's what's really cool about the law. You're still doing new things all day, every day. It's almost like solving a new puzzle all the time. And that's what keeps it interesting. But um, so I've been a practitioner for a long time. I've represented children. I've represented mentally ill people. I've, rep I've been an ad litem quite a bit in a lot of cases. I've been a mediator since 1992. So I'm always looking to try to work out the problems in the most efficient way possible. But sometimes, you know, people create a lot of problems for themselves. And it's not like a lawyer can just come in with a magic wand and solve it all. So I'm still excited about it and still love what I'm doing. That's awesome. That's really great. And I mean, you know, obviously, I can see that you have a lot of passion for what you're doing. Um, you know, thinking back, though, when you were first getting started, did you like growing up, you knew you wanted to be a lawyer, you knew you wanted to be an attorney? What, what got you into it? Not at all. I the only thing that happened, I was lucky enough to have a father who saw the potential in me. And he constantly said to me, Melanie, Anybody with brains like you would be a fool to waste them. Get your law degree, get your medical. He, he didn't care whether it was law or medical. He just thought I should go on to higher education. And I was like, but dad, I wanna be a social worker. Well, guess what? I got to be a glorified social worker in my law practice. And it has been a great career, but I had no idea what lawyers did. I didn't even know, but I just listened to my dad and he, you know, he seemed to believe in me. So thank heavens. And I just went for it and it has just been the best decision. Awesome. No, that's really cool. Yeah. You know, it's interesting to hear some, you know, some ways that people go in there and, um, you know, it, it kind of makes me wonder, um, besides your father, I mean, have you had any other kind of like mentors that kind of helped you? I, I know you said you, you got into this pretty early within your own practice. So it wasn't like you had, you know, previous experience working at a big firm for 20 years before going off on your own. Um, so yeah what were some, who were some influential people in your life? You know, I guess the really, the thing is I was probably an entrepreneur, you know, my whole life. I was always, uh, I had a little jewelry business. I was an independent painting contractor during college. It never actually dawned on me to work for anyone else. I mean, I had done so well in my own independent businesses. So all of my friends and I, we, you know, we, we weren't from Yale or Princeton, you know, most of the big law firms were hiring people outside of, you know, the, the local law schools. And there was just so much work that I did go to work for the Court of Appeals for one year. And uh, that introduced me to the courthouse and the judges. And I have just sort of, I stayed under the foot of the judges, I got a lot of court appointments. And so I still work in most, you know, almost all the courts, I get some kind of appointment or work still all these years later, uh, from the courts and the judges, but developing my own practice too. So 
Awesome. No, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. And besides your own practice, I know you were telling me before the call that you've written a couple books. Um, you know, I know everybody watching would probably be super interested to know a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Yeah, being a writer was really my true dream. I think I wrote the story of my life when I was six years old. It was only a paragraph because what more is there? But I always knew and I kept my diaries. I mean, I, I know every street, every price, every everything of every experience I ever had because I wanted to save all that for when I wrote about it someday. So being able to get published, my first book was um, in 2009, the American Bar Association. It was HIPAA for the general practitioner. It was still a book. It wasn't the sexiest book ever, but it was <laughs> still a book, an ABA book. I've been very involved with the American Bar Association Book Publications Board. So I learned a lot about writing and publications from working on that. I ch ended up chairing the uh, Book Publications Board for a while. And then I ended up chairing the whole division for the American Bar Association, the solo small firm and general practice division. And that was just a great, you know, wonderful life experience to get to represent lawyers all over the country. And really solo small firm, that comprises about 76% of American lawyers. Yeah. So I was lucky to get to represent them. And then my fiction book, which I love, love, love. It's a legal thriller. It is, um, I need to get the, the uh, sequel out and I'm a little bit late. It's been eight years since that book came out, but it's actually still selling. It's actually selling better now on Amazon than it did when it first came out. Oh, congratulations. So, yeah, that's, it's crazy how that's happened. So I'm, I'm on the way to getting that sequel done. And then my book that came out a couple of years ago is a defining moments insights into the lawyer's soul. And I interviewed some really amazing superstar lawyers about their lives and kind of put it in my own leadership model. I got their lead lines, you know, the things, my lead line is never ever give up. And so the stories are about those principles and I put it into a leadership model of lead, legacy, excellence, authenticity, and determination. So I'm excited about the future of my writing career. And I actually do do author consults. I do help people with their contracts. Just talk to a lawyer on a case before I talk to you, who's got a contract for a, a legal book that he's doing, and he wants me to look over the contract. So lots of fun things in the area of publishing. That's really cool. You know, and it's interesting too. I, you know, I've actually kind of uh, always been fascinated with writing myself. Uh, when I was like in sixth grade, um, or even earlier, I think maybe when I was in elementary school, I actually wrote like a, a 50 page like fantasy novel, and I self published it. And then I wrote two more fantasy novels after that in middle school. And, uh, Keep yeah, going, don't, don't drop it. You've got to learn, you know, you have yeah. to you do. I always tell people, you know, people come up to you all the time and go, oh, I've got this great story for you. I want you to write my story. And I look at them, I go, no, no, no. I got my own story, you need <laughs> writers, but you need to learn the craft. And uh, luckily, I'm going to be teaching at an upcoming writers conference in Oklahoma over Labor Day, the writer con. A uh, lawyer who was a guy who's a lawyer, William Bernhardt. He's a lawyer, but he's been a full time author for years. Uh, I'm going to be speaking at his, I'm going to actually be doing a mindfulness workshop for authors, uh, teaching them, teaching authors how to be more mindful, creating better characters. Oh, so, that's really cool. Fun, that, fun, wow. Fun. Fun. That's really cool. That's, that's really exciting. Good for you. I know. I know. It's yeah. crazy, crazy fun. Yeah. So, well, you know, I want to ask you a couple more questions recentered um, about kind of things that have been going on more recently with your law firm, um, because I know a lot of people have faced a lot of challenges through COVID. Um, so I would love to know kind of, you know, where you guys were at before COVID, what happened during that process, maybe any challenges you faced, how you overcame them, and then what, you know, everything looks like for you now. Okay, well, you, it, it, I don't want to sound like Pollyanna or anything, but uh, you probably don't know who Pollyanna is, right? I'm not even sure I know who Pollyanna is, but uh, that's the same, somebody that's just like all, you know, everything's unicorns and roses. Oh, I mean, gotcha, gotcha. The deal is, is, you know, being on your own and having your own practice is not always easy. There are terrible things that can happen. There are crises. You know, I always tell people, keep your overhead low. Don't get, get in over your head. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, keep, keep have a depth and breadth to your practice. So I know people during COVID, like people who just did 
tax cases. Well, the tax cases stop for a year, okay? But if you have a lot of variety, and so with us, you know, we have our own small little office. So, you know, I, there was never a day where I didn't get to come in the office. And besides that, since everything is in the cloud for me, I can work from anywhere I want to, even from my iPhone, you know, yeah. so, and everything's paperless. So we were, we were already there when all this happened. And then, you know, we had a couple of weeks where we only got one client in or something, but uh, basically it just kind of, we had like, we were up by 30% last year. So, um, so it wasn't, it wasn't a tough year, but we did have to pivot and we did have to, um, you know, reposition. But what was really cool about it is because we had laid the groundwork, I've had a zoom account since 2016. It's just that nobody else wanted to do it. So <laughs> I, I had it, my password is still 2016. Right. Uh -huh. so, I, so I just active, I mean, I just like, I already had it. I didn't really have to learn how to do it. And then I have found that really being on top of technology, you, you know, you don't have to be young to be on top of it. You, it you, some old people sure. aren't, but there are young people who are just as resistant. You can't be resistant to anything. So basically, all of the skills and all of the things that I'd been working on for so long came into play at that time. So I was prepared for it. And, and my clients actually love to talk on Zoom. That way they don't have to drive in traffic. They don't have to spend all that time. And we're connecting, you know, we're able to connect on a deep level with Zoom. You know, I mean, it's really, really cool. So we're probably going to keep doing it. I absolutely love the court with Zoom. I got mm -hmm. so much more efficient. But the thing that really helped during COVID was getting, we got more lined out. We got more, I used to be sort of anti, oh, well, just call me when you call me, you know, we'll be play telephone chat. I wasn't really much for scheduling things. Well, mm -hmm. now I'm really into scheduling things. Right. But, um, you know, keeping everything super client centric. You know, really, the, the one skill that I wish that I had learned when I was a young lawyer, the main thing that I would teach young lawyers is don't be afraid of your clients. You are in charge and you are responsible for setting the tone of how you're treated, what their expectations are, what what your services you're going to provide them. And you're the boss of the case. And if you don't set that up in the very beginning, you know, that's where things can go wrong. Always communicate with your clients. Always tell the truth. Don't make up any stories, you know, and that's one of the biggest bar complaints. That's one of the biggest sources of grievances is people don't feel like they're being communicated to. So I tell them in the very first consult, I say, listen, don't call me every day and ask me stuff. I'll let you know when I do something because you're going to pay me to do that. And I don't want to use up your retainer chit chatting with you. I want to use your money to do your case, you know, but just being really client centric from the very beginning uh, has really helped me transform my practice into being where I look forward to coming to the office every day. And I look forward to going home at night too, you know, at a reasonable hour. And I tell my clients that I say, look, I don't bring a magic wand to, work with me every day. I can't just make all your problems go away for, you know, nothing. You're going to have to pay for this. So, you know, setting their expectations up in the beginning. So I was able last year to really focus on those things and hone those skills more. But we were here every day just knocking it out. You know, nothing takes the place of good, hard work. Sure. Wow. Well, Melanie, thank you so much for that. That is a, so much value in there. I mean, people are probably going to have to rewind, you know, rewind this and watch this back. That is, I think everything that you mentioned is super important. And, it took me uh, a long time to learn it though. Listen, yeah. I did not do it that way. I used to hate clients. Would you believe that? <laughs> I mean, what, 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 what was wrong with it? But you know what? I just didn't know how to do it. I mean, I, I just, it's like the light bulb came on. So I, I really want to share that information with the young lawyers and get, help them get the confidence that they need to ask for what they deserve and know that they should be paid and they shouldn't have to do everything for free. And if people don't pay, they don't represent them. You know, you got to be, you kind of got to be brutal about setting your goals and, and keeping up with your practice. Yeah. You got to know your own worth for sure. For sure. Yeah. 
Um, and something that you mentioned there, I want to I want to dive a little bit deeper into is um, what you were talking about technology, because I, I know what you said, you know, some people old and young are still a little bit scared with all this new kind of crazy technology that's out there. Um, besides Zoom, I would love to know, you know, what type of, you know, what type of, um, you know, whether it's software, like a CRM you're using to manage your clients, or you're doing some type of online marketing or something, what kind of online strategies have you been implementing that have been helpful for your business? Well, I want to tell you one thing that, that happened when, when somebody told me about five years ago, they said something about reviews. That was right when we're, now I was scared to death. I, one thing that I would say is if you ever find yourself resisting some, an idea and just shutting it down, go ahead and resist it in the beginning, but then think about it. Cause that's what happened to me. I told somebody from Thomson Reuters, I was like, reviews, I'm a, I've, I've been a lawyer for 30 years. I don't need any reviews. I've had plenty of happy clients. You know, I was just got all defensive and I just kind of found myself going around. I was in a little fritz, you know, and then I hung up the phone and I stopped and I thought, well, you know, things are changing and maybe this would be a good idea. So I, I, I rethought it and then I called him up again. I said, tell me again about that thing. And so I began to incorporate reviews. I was actually afraid. What was beneath my resistance was fear. And I I was afraid that nobody would give me a good review. I was afraid that people didn't like lawyers and that they would never write good things about us, you know? And so I, I it was, a, it was me that had the problem. It wasn't everybody else. It was me. Okay. And so when for that and you go through that process I began to just tell my clients right up front in the very initial thing I say you know what I want is I want to do a good job for you I want you to be happy with the service that I provide you and I want a good review from you and then at the end I tell them that again and I say remember that conversation we had in the beginning and you know so that you know, they feel honored to give me a review because they know how important it is. I, I really communicate with them eyeball to eyeball, hand to hand, hug to hug, whatever it is, you know, that this is important to me because then I get more good people like you, you know, in my life. Yeah. And it's really important. So really just letting them know that I do care. And, and then also not over promising. I can't promise you the outcome on the case. I can't promise you that we're going to win. All I can promise you is that I'm going to do my very best and do the best of my ability for you. And that's all I can promise you. And so that works for some people and it doesn't work for others. I don't give out a bunch of free con free consultations. Uh, they have to pay me to talk to me. And then if they hire me and give me a employment contract, after that, they get a one hour credit for the consult on their first bill. So they do end up getting a free consult, but only after they put some skin in the game. Because people people that don't want it, if they don't want to put any skin in the game, they can't afford me because it costs money to do legal services. Definitely. Yeah. I, you know, all the time, I, you know, it's, it's interesting when people are all they're looking is for free advice from these lawyers. I mean, you, you put in so much time into your business, you know, so much money, you know, and, and to just be expected to give away stuff for free is, you know, a little ridiculous. I'm now glad. They want to set up, yeah. They yeah. want to set up free consults, like put it on the calendar and come in in person and let talk, let me talk to them for free. No, 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 that doesn't, we don't do that anymore. And it really has worked out really, really well, but it really stems from knowing your own worth and valuing yourself. And if you sure. aren't, good at doing that you need to start meditating on it and start learning about it start reading and really really focusing on understanding how hard it was for you to get through college and law school look yeah. at the student loan debt i mean this is a valuable service that we're giving people but i i tell you it was i was a late bloomer on all this so i'm making it sound super easy and everything but that would be the one thing the note to myself that i would write to my younger self as a lawyer, you know, really know your worth and, you know, you know, know that you are in charge of this and, and you're in charge of your firm. The firm okay. doesn't happen to you. You are the one that creates your firm. So oh, that's sure. the way to future proof it is to really care about your clients, be client centric. That's what I always say. We're client centric and uh, tell the truth. I mean, if, if you're, I always tell them, I say, look, I get sick sometimes. I want to take a vacation every now and then. My staff has to have doctor appointments. You know, we are real people. We're actually human beings that have real lives, you know. Yeah. So. 
No, definitely. No. Okay, cool. And I only got two more questions for you. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. And I, I really appreciate all of this. So this is really valuable. Um, you know, one thing um, I know before our call, we, you know, there was a little confusion and it's something you mentioned was doing, you know, some, some videos or for advertising. And I know you're in a pretty, you know, competitive market I know in Houston. So, you know, what are some things you know, that um, you would recommend for somebody who is trying to compete in a competitive market or even just things you're doing, you know, whether you're doing, you know, advertisements yourself to set apart, what are things that people could be doing? Well, that was part of the last question I didn't finish answering. I use Clio for the law practice management. I can't even imagine not having a data management system. I mean, crazy okay. not to, but it, so I've got that in the mobile phone. You can bill on it. I mean, it's just amazing. And then we also have the other component. It used to be called Lexicata. It's kind of a CRM. It's an intake. So we've got templates that we send out to people for them to fill out online. You know, that it dovetails into law pay. There's so many apps that dovetail into Clio that'll do just about anything and everything you want. And I love it. Clio actually launched in 2008 at our GP solo fall meeting, the group that I ended up chairing. So I have a really a heart for Clio. They have a great conference in the fall. And then of course, you know, getting on the super lawyers is a really cool thing to do. And um, also, you know, ever do a little bit. I, I do a little bit of, with a lot of different, I do a little bit of AVO. I do a little bit of a lawyers.com. All my lawyers.com reviews are on my website. I do a little bit of super lawyers. I've got the top spot there and but I don't spend that much on advertising I mean I should probably spend more or something but yeah I don't really spend that much on it and um the it, and I've got this uh thing called zip whip that is a texting app that makes my um makes my phone line my heart my landline into a text so yeah. if, some, if someone called me right now after we get off the phone, I can look that way. I don't have to talk to them. I actually set up consults through texting people. Like if I missed a call because Sharon's gone, she leaves at three every day. Um, I can text them and say, thank you for contacting Braglock PC. Uh, Sharon will be in in the morning. We'd love to take care of you. And I can take care of it through texting and everybody loves it. But guess what? It dovetails into Clio and there's a little button that says add time. So you awesome. can build it and it goes into all your cases and you can put it, you can have all those text messages in. You don't have to use your personal phone for your text. And that, that has saved, that is just worth its weight in gold. I love oh. ZipWhip. Yeah, so, that's a really yeah. cool tool. Yeah. That's a really cool tool. Yeah. People gotta check that out. Yeah, we do a lot of a lot of good things. What last year we upgraded all our computers, all of our um, monitors, all of our cameras. Um, we did a whole big upgrade last year or so. Awesome. Well, that's really cool. Good for you guys. Um, and, you know, so the, my final question is, you know, everything seems like it's going great for you guys and that's fantastic. So what does the future of your law firm look like? You know, are you looking, I know you said you kind of like to keep it, you know, broad with the different, you know, working with different types of cases, but is there one particular area you're really looking to try and grow in, or you have a goal of, we'd like to get, you know, a hundred new clients in the next year or, or what, what does the future hold no, for you guys? Actually, I've already in the long span of my career have actually grown and gone back and grown and gone back a couple of times. And I really don't, you know, I like to practice law. So when you grow, then you get all this overhead, you get all these employees, all of a sudden you're managing all this stuff. And I just don't like that. So I don't really want to grow that much, maybe a little bit, maybe, I mean, possibly a little bit, but um, for me, keeping a lean, mean fighting machine where I can enjoy my life and I have control over my life is what I like. Um, you, you could probably make, you know, when you start increasing your expenses and your, you know, the, the variant between how much you get to take home doesn't really expand that much, you know, so you, you want to take home as a lot. You know, so you got to find a way if, if expanding and getting all that responsibility and all that, you know, you just have to be careful. Like something that happened to me about 15 years into my practice taught me what can happen if one of your big sources goes away. 
and all of a sudden you know, you're stuck with the office lease and you're stuck with the copier and you're stuck with all these payments. I mean, I've been through that and it takes a while to get out of it. So that's why I've just kept it, you know, to a, a, a level. Yeah. So we're, my, my goals are, I'm just getting started. And I hate to say that because I just, I feel like I'm at the beginning. I don't, I don't feel like I'm at the end. I uh -huh. probably, you know, when people say, do you want to retire? I'm like, retire. Why would I retire? I'm doing what I love. You yeah. know, I mean, for me, helping people is such a cool thing to get to be able to help people. And um, to, I do a little success coaching along the way too. I try to teach them how to not to make those mistakes in the future too. So I get to do a little teaching and preaching along with my law and uh, just have the best clients. You know, I feel really grateful, but it, it was a long, hard road to get there. It's not an easy street. And yes, do we still have clients that are really high maintenance and is there some, a lot of stress to it? Yes, of course there is. There's a lot of things going on out there in the world that, you know, you can't control. Oh boy, I could bore you with a ton of <laughs> stories. War stories. They're war, I love my war stories. Yeah. But you know, basically for me, it's just to try to help people and enjoy doing it and then go home at night and not have it on my mind all the time. You know, that's the thing when you grow too big, a lot of times you'll, you'll grow too big. And I've seen all the partnerships and I've seen the fights and I've seen the firm names change and the, you know, I, I've just seen everything that's going on around me. And so having a nice small practice is what I love. And I'm actually doing what I love to do right now. So. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think like what, what you said, doing what you love, because some people have different goals, you know, maybe they do want to have, you know, they want to be able to take Fridays off and spend it with their family or something. Yeah. So building a business, you know, around the lifestyle that you want, I think is important, you know, that'll probably make you happy at work, and it'll make you happier after work as well. Right. That's what you want. I'm really blessed. I just got appointed to the Texas Lawyers Assistance Program Committee for three years. And that's the committee about lawyer wellness and mindfulness. And I'm really, really wanting to promote, you know, a daily meditation practice, starting your day off with just a simple little 10 minute, you know, thing, and then have incorporating a little bit of exercise, you know, just really can make a difference. And then having a gratitude practice can really make a difference in your life. You know, that way you get to the office, you're already a winner. You've already meditated, you've already worked out, you've already done your gratitude. What else could hurt? What else could get to you during the day? And so that meditation practice really helps you handle the stresses because, you know, at the end of the day, I sit here, look, I sit there all day long. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Oh, I can't believe that happened to you. Oh, your father died of COVID. Uh, your grandfather died of COVID, 12 grandkids. I mean, I've had a lot of COVID cases lately where people have died. And, you know, I have to be full of empathy. I have to be full of solutions. I have to be like a walking encyclopedia all day, right? So I've got to have the energy. I've got to have the emotional, physical stamina and strength to be able to impart and listen to people with empathy all day long too. And then not let it drain me. That's the key. You don't want to let it drain you. So at the end of the day, you're like, give me the first drink I can, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, that's why a lot of lawyers turn into alcoholics because it's like, there's so much stress. So just learning to modulate, this is what I would share with younger lawyers, learning to modulate that energy coming in, the energy going out, and just keeping in, staying in touch with your emotions is a good thing to do. So yeah, I'm living my goals. My goals is to get a whole bunch more books. Maybe have a few associates doing the work while I'm writing. Yeah, I've got I've got plans, you know, for gotcha. sure. That's awesome. You know, um, you know, I, you know, we'll end the show soon, but afterwards I would love to chat with you for another minute. Maybe we can set up another call sometime in the future to talk about everything that's been, you know, that happened since. So, um, you know, Melanie, thank you again so much for being here. Um, if anybody wants to find you, where would be the best place to, to get in contact with you? Uh, Melanie at braglawpc.com. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for watching. And again, thank you, Melanie. And uh, we will see you all in the next one. Thank you, Luke.